We've gone deep in the Herald Sun tomorrow, and I can tell you, fellas, uh, things got pretty testy in the Barossa hub. This is where the tension really started to crank up for Hawthorne. It was a pretty tough time in the Barossa hub. So this is mid-2021. The team was already on the slide, and there was I can tell you there was a, a deep fallout, a really big falling out between Alistair Clarkson and his respected footy boss, Graham Wright, and it was over the future of Sean Burgoyne. So Clarkson wanted Burgoyne to play on the following season. He was within, uh, within striking distance of 400 games, whereas Graham Wright thought he was finished. Clarko, you're not often sentimental with your retiring mm. players, but Burgoyne got the tick to play on again, but it became an incredibly tense time for the, for the pair. Wildfires were raging throughout the football department, and the ripples really went through the, playing, uh, the players. We all know it was tough in COVID, of course, but it became a really tense and fractious footy club, it's fair to say. We know Graham Wright left at the end of that season, the day after the rookie draft, filed his resignation. Graham Wright went to Collingwood. He knew Nathan Buckley's future was uncertain as coach. It became clear that Bucks wasn't going to go on. And Wright, who absolutely loved Sammy Mitchell, had Mitchell at the top of his wish list. That put Hawthorne on the clock, of course, and that is where the famous succession plan came about. So, Jay, massive story. This is one of the biggest stories I can remember in my time covering football. It's a, it's a great peek behind the curtain. Yep. But before that Barossa blow-up, what happened in the Perth hub? It was that where cracks first started to appear and we yep. thought Alistair Clarkson might, might walk away. It might have been, Sammy. So, uh, Alistair Clarkson signed a long-term deal at the end of 2018. He was signed to 2022. So, in the Perth hub in 2020, they suffered a 32-point loss to West Coast. They were 4-7 and seven at the time. Alistair Clarkson convenes an urgent meeting with Graham Wright and Justin Reeves and says, fellas, I think I'm out. I think I'm Jeez. done. This could be the end. Of, this could be it for me at the end of the season. He'd given in 15 and a bit years. He'd won four premierships, but they topped up, haven't they, Hawks? Maybe the recruiting was a little bit short-sighted. They brought in Chad Wingard, but they were going down the ladder, not up the ladder. So Clarkson, who was frustrated, says to Reeves and Wright, I'm out. I think Sam Mitchell's ready. Um, and and uh, Wright stayed remarkably calm. I mean, this is two years before his contract was, was due up. He says, take some time to think about it. Talk with your family. This is in the Perth Hub, mid-2020. Clarkson comes back. That's yeah, the timeline. Yeah, 2020. So he comes back uh, two hours later. He says, actually, I've thought about it. It should be right, mate. I'll, I'll stay. I'm digging in. But is, as you say, Sammy, perhaps that's when the cracks first started to appear, and that's when Hawthorne's senior leaders start having their thinking about whether they'd renew Clarkson beyond 2022. I, I love the piece. It was really deeply reported. Mm. So many great nuggets. Let me get my timeline uh, line right. Yep. So August 20, Perth. Then they go to Barossa. Yep. Righty and Clarko uh, break up, yep. so to speak. So the next year, they strike a succession plan. Yep. What in God's name were they thinking when, as you've reported in this piece, yep. Justin Reeves, the CEO, and Clarko weren't really talking? And I yep. think it's pretty obvious that yep. Clarko and Jeff Kennett were, were not talking. Yep. How did they think it might work? There were some deep divides. And at that succession plan press conference, I was told you could cut the air with a knife. It is as tense and as awkward as uh, you could possibly think. I think Hawth, you know, deep down, I think, Ralphie, Hawthorne thought when they were going to um, go with Mitchell and the board decided that, that maybe Clarkson would actually just walk away. Uh, that, OK. Maybe, maybe they thought... If they'd ever met Clarko, they should have known that Clarko was not going to work well in a succession plan. And he dug in. Clarkson said, no, I'm not walking away. We can make this work. But then, as we know, they spent only 20 minutes on working out the practicalities. How's it going to work? You know, who's going to focus on what? It was incredibly awkward. And then it was essentially the Hawthorne players in the middle of 2021. I'm talking about uh, Jackie Gunston. I'm talking about Ben McAvoy, who said... This is ridiculous. So they got belted by 62 points by Fremantle the first game after the succession plan was announced, but it was confused. They didn't know who their boss was. Mm. There were two, there were two bulls in one paddock. So it was essentially player uh, power. Ray McLean coming from leadership teams to try and smooth out some of those bumps. As you said, Reeves and Clarkson weren't talking. Right, and his relationship wasn't great. Jeff, we know, and, and Clarko were pretty testy. So there were fireworks everywhere. Essentially, the players said, this is too confusing. And then Clarkson stepped away, gave Sam Mitchell, the reins and you look broad brush now like this was a massive story one of the biggest as you say we've had in our time would any would any of the Hawthorne fans out there disagree that the well, right move the right rein was pulled? I think the question is not whether the right move was made but wasn't made too late I mean if Clarkson was recruiting with a short tight with with short uh, short-sighted vision yep. um, could they have made the move early would Hawthorne be better placed if they'd actually moved 
uh, move coaches uh, earlier on. I don't think they could have justified it to their fans. And I think it was always going to get really messy there. But, you know, Clark, I was so recently removed from those four premierships. I think that would have been really hard to sell. It was a massive crossroad. You picked it out because 2018 Hawthorne uh, lost finals in straight sets, two 30-point defeats. And that's where the signs were there. We, maybe we need to rebuild. Maybe we need to invest in young talent. Instead, they topped up again. They gave away first-round pick, second-round pick, and Ryan Burton, a good young defender, uh, and brought in Chad Wingard. And it's fair to say probably that hasn't worked after getting a Tommy Mitchell and um, Jay Gramier in 2016. So, so, could there have just been more honesty through that succession plan? That's insane to think that there was 20 minutes of consultation about who might you know, yeah. pull which triggers as well. But if, if Clarkson had known how much this club wanted Sam Mitchell, well, potentially this could have averted such a messy, toxic ending. So I think he felt, or whoever it was that blew up the succession plan, felt yep. we need to watch the word world burn. And when it's burned from the ashes, we can say, <laughs> hey, do you think it's better if we get our $900,000 and move on? I think if there'd been honesty and whoever it was that was involved in that had just said, do you think you could pay us that $900,000? Yep. I think Jeff Kennett would have done that in a heartbeat. We still would have had the Hawthism, Hawthorne racism scandal, but we wouldn't have had as much of the toxicity. The mo money wasn't an issue for the Hawks. I don't grant. That was essentially his thank you. He had four premierships, a stellar contribution, a long service leave payment. So um, I don't think money was an issue. Really, Clarko just... Dug, on his, dug in his heels. Jake, could you tell me about the farewell game for Jared Ruffett? Yep. So I remember in 2020, the Bombers players were desperate for Tom Bell Chambers to get a farewell game. Yep. He didn't get it in the last game of the season. They went with Sam Draper. Yep. It caused a, a, a ruction in the playing group. Was Jared Ruffett close to not getting a farewell game in 2019? Yeah, it's good points covered um, in the story, Sammy. The players were desperate for Jared Ruffett he to won play. He flags with him. Gold Coast. It's extraordinary. He wasn't he was, Tom Bell Chambers. He was a, a premiership legend. He was, he was captain at the time, remember? He got dropped in round eight because he wasn't in great form. Played again round 14, dropped again. The player said he's got it. We've got to give him a farewell game. He's against Gold Coast. He kicked six goals. He's almost second best on ground. But for a while early in the week, I think the feeling was no. Roughhead <laughs> wasn't going to play. Again, the players uh, stood up. So all in the Herald Sun uh, tomorrow. Amazing. Plenty of information yeah, there. Well. It was one of the biggest stories, uh, of course, the big succession plan. We need to get to Josh Battle with you, Ralphie, because um, the gun St Kilda defender has a big decision to make. Which way is he leaning? Uh, I think he's very strongly leading to Hawthorne, and so much of it ties into this extraordinary ability that, Cl that um, Sam Mitchell has to bring these young kids along. So as we speak, I think Hawthorne believes it will land him. It would take a, a change in mind for him to move, uh, decide to stay at St Kilda. Yep. Within minutes of him meeting Sam Mitchell, I think the very strong um, message from the football club at Hawthorne was that he wants to be here, he wants to change. He wants to chase a premiership, he loves what the Hawks are building, I think they've pitched to him, the Dingley, the John Kennedy Centre, which will be up by next year. He could change his mind, St Kilda could throw a bigger offer at him, but I think the Hawks would be really surprised if he was not in Hawthorne colours with Sam Mitchell next year. So imagine you secure him, you can throw James Sicily forward, and you've still got a very early top ten pick to go to the market or to take another young kid. It is a, It would be a significant coup if they could get him across the line. So my understanding is that he's going to be a very rich man regardless. St yep. Kilda's offer is uh, unbelievably good. So he's an unrestricted free agent. So the logic there from Gubby Allen is throw him, uh, throw him a huge cheque, and if he wants to leave, surely Hawthorne has to at least to match the offer, and that way if Hawthorne offers in the same vicinity, they should get band one compensation. St Kilda is really nervous about this one, because if he leaves for not enough money and they don't get band one, obviously as an unrestricted free agent, they can't match the offer, that would be a nightmare result for them. So, so the difference of $50,000, so let's call it a $920,000 offer compared to nine seventy, if that's where it ends up, that could be the difference between pick five, a compensation pick, or pick 30, because it would be an end of first round pick that would blow out to blow about out. 30. So... I don't know whether Hawthorne will offer him that much, but St Kilda will be desperately hoping that's the case. So if you're, like, St, so if you're St Kilda, you're putting 900 on the table yep. and saying, here's your offer from us. If you want to go, surely you're accepting something in the same ballpark and we'll get picks five, more, five and six. More money, a better pick.